Hi, right, today I'm sitting here in my garage and I'm going to fix for you and show you how to do this yourself. In my opinion, what's the biggest problem with a Hummingbird 360? And it's nothing to do with the settings. I've got videos on the settings that you guys can check out that show you how to fine tune it. But the biggest problem is this shaft. The shaft right here is simply too big for pretty much every trolling motor. So stay with me and I'll show you how to fix this problem. All right, so I've got a uh, 54 inch shaft Altrex and out of the box, the shaft that comes with these 360 units are just way too long. So I do have a live right here and the more separation you can have between your, the head of the 360 and the live, the less interference you're likely to have. A lot of that interference comes with the 360. So when I turn the pinging off on my 360, I get ultra clear views on my live. So I know that these are too close. Now, if you're a bass fisherman and you're fishing ultra shallow, you're going to need to raise your trolling motor up. And as you raise the trolling motor up, this live is going to get closer and closer to the 360. Now granted, when you're fishing that shallow, you're probably not going to be using the live at all. But I want to be able to adjust my trolling motor for the for the sit situation that I'm in and raise and lower it without having any problems. So if you look right here, this is the part of the trolling motor, the head, that's going to be moving, swinging around, and it's going to come within a fraction of an inch of the tip of this 360. So I put a piece of tape here because I'm going to cut off this much of the shaft. And you might be thinking, why in the world would you do that? That's crazy. If I nick any of these wires, I'm going to have to buy a new 360. So I'm going to show you a way to do this without worrying about nicking the wires. All right, to do this, you're just going to need a couple of tools. Uh, you could use one of these multi-tools with a titanium blade, but I think you're going to have a tougher time. So a better choice would be using a sawzall uh, with obviously a metal blade and the shorter the better. Okay, so you need one of these. You could do it with a hacksaw, but boy, that would be a lot of work. It's going to take forever, but you do need a hacksaw and I'm going to show you exactly what you need this for here in a second, but I'm not going to be sawing with this. And then obviously you'll need some kind of blades and then you're going to need a file just for the very end. So the first thing you're going to have to do is take this rubber piece out of the shaft. So I just wiggled it a little bit, came out, and then I slid it up the wires just a little bit and get them out of the way. Okay, so that's the very first thing you need to do. Secondly, try to determine how much of the shaft you want to take off. You can see that my trolling motor is within about two to three inches of being at the lowest point possible. So the m lowest I could ever go is another two to three inches. So if I went two to three inches, which would be right about here, you could see the head of this would be hitting that. So I'm gonna go about double that. I'm going roughly seven to eight inches. That's how much I'm gonna take off and that's what the white tape is for. So I mentioned the hacksaw. So basically you're actually gonna use the blade only. So I'm gonna take this blade off Taking the tension off. And now I've got the blade. So this blade is a perfect size to fit right into the shaft and it's going to go above the wires. So I, what, what I want to do is pull and make sure the wires are taut, which they are, it doesn't take much, and then put this directly on top of those. And what that's going to do is protect the wires as I cut into this. Okay, now again, if I cut these wires, I'm done, I'm, I'm toast. So I want something that's big enough to fit in there. If you have two blades, you could probably put them on both in there and spread them out and that would give you a little more space. But I feel confident that this is going to uh, do what I need. The other thing is you wanna make sure that your protection is gonna go as far as the tape, at least. So I know that I need have at, at maximum maybe three inches hanging out the, the top 
I'm going to go a little beyond and so I'm only going to have about two inches right about there. All right, so I've got a step stool here to help me get some height on this and you're going to leave it mounted. And this is a basic vise, it's a perfect vise for, for doing this, so there's no need taking this off and having to unhook all your wires. I am going to use a towel to kind of protect my boat a little bit. There's going to be metal shavings. They're going to be very small, but might as well protect it. And now I'm ready to go. So, my first cut is going to be right here. And I'm going to go straight in. I'm not going to go real far. Again, at all times thinking about those wires. Okay, so that didn't take much at all and I was putting no pressure on there. I'm not all the way through, but I'm partially through at this point. So from this point on, I'm just going to probably put the camera on, on a, you know, fast and I, you're going to watch me cut this. So I'm going to make this cut halfway through and then I'm going to make a slice coming all the way down and wiggle that out and then I'm going to make the cut underneath. Okay, so this is why you watch these videos. My hacksaw blade actually, uh, with the vibrations, slid further in. Uh, so what I've got is just a little hand saw. I'm going to use this. It's got a handle and then once I cut this off I'll fish out the, uh, the hacksaw blade if I have to take this off and move this upside down. So that's a mistake on my part but you need something to protect those those wires. So now I'm going to use this little this blade right here. And again I just pre-measured it and it goes beyond the eight or so inches, seven or eight inches I'm going to take off. Now you can see what I did, I ended up taping with, I used some red electrical tape so you can see this. I taped this blade to the wire so it wouldn't vibrate so much. There was a lot of vibration. I kept feeling this to see how hot it was, it really wasn't very hot. So now what I need to do is take this off and put it underneath the wires. So I'm going to take all this tape off and we'll put it on, on the other side. So I also decided to tape the hacksaw blades just to make sure that there's no rough edges that would be vibrating on the uh, on my wires. And I had that done for the first cut 
but a lot of that because I was scraping the edge of the blade a lot of that tape came off so I'm going to retape for the installation on the bottom side of the wires so that whole process I know it was on sped up but it probably took me less than five minutes to to do that and I would stop every once in a while again checking to see if the the uh the shaft was getting too hot for my wires but it really really never did all right so i'm going to put this on the bottom of the wires this time and i'm going to uh, tape it again and we'll finish cutting it all right so there you have it i've shortened the shaft by about seven inches or so i've got two pieces that came off these are just going to go in the garbage i can now raise this up another five six inches to get it away from that live and i'm still even on the lowest setting will not be hitting this so pretty quick little hack but i think those of you that are having some issues with especially the interference from the live this is a good way to uh to go about it i know a lot of pros out on tour are doing this as well if you watch brandon polanek and his live it is literally barely under the water all you need are these top two uh, metal sensors to be under the water for this to be activated so you don't need it plunged way deep into the water a foot or two feet uh, just get a little bit of it underwater and you'll have a great time with this 360 again i think it's the most important piece of equipment on my boat thanks for watching and we'll see you next time